Hello and welcome. My name is Kate Merrand. I'm a program manager at the Department of Small and Local Business Development. And today we are kicking off our spring webinar series. This series will run through May 2024, starting today, May 6th through the end of May. Um, every Monday through Thursday at 4 p.m., we will have a different session about resources and resource providers available to help DC based businesses and entrepreneurs. We're going to be kicking this series off, telling you a little bit about our team. And so also on the line with me today, and, and we'll do some more introductions in a minute, are Javi Sanchez and Camille Nixon. Uh, but we're going to dive right in and tell you a little bit about our team at the Department of Small and Local Business Development. So I just mentioned names, and you're going to hear more from them throughout the session. Um, but once again, my name is Kate Merrand. I'm a program manager. I'm going to let um, both Camille and Javi say hi real quick uh, so you can hear from them. Hello and welcome. I'm Camille Nixon. I'm a project manager with a focus on accessing capital. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Javi Sanchez. I'm a project coordinator at uh, InnoEd with a focus on small businesses and refashion. Thanks for that. And Cynthia Golson is unable to join us today, um, but you are. If you are working with us, or if you have been working with us at NOED, you have probably interfaced with Cynthia, and you probably will. We also want to let you know, uh, we don't have that name to release yet, but we do have one more team member coming soon. Um, we have a project manager that we hope will be joining us in the next few weeks. So let's go ahead and dive in a little more. So let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to cover today. Um, just a little bit about NOED. We're going to discuss our mission, a little bit of the history of the work that we've been doing over the last eight years, and some themes. But we're also going to dive into some very specific programs. So you heard Camille mention access to capital. We also have our small biz, biz assist program, refashion, um, a number of other programs that we're going to tell you about. But first, let's tell you about DSLBD itself, the Department of Small and Local Business Development. InnoEd is one of the many divisions at the Department of Small and Local Business Development. DSLBD is a DC government agency and it supports the development, economic growth, and retention of district-based businesses and promotes economic development through the district's commercial corridors. With the addition of InnoEd eight years ago, that also started to include supporting entrepreneurs as they were building up a business. Within that, InnoEd is working to build the entrepreneurial ecosystem with many of our great partners across the district. Um, we have several statutory programs and also agency initiatives, some which are current, some which we've done in the past, but all of these programs are aimed at removing barriers to entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is for everyone. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So a little bit about our history. I won't spend too much time, but if you've been interacting with us, uh, you can see a bit of a timeline here from when we started with the very first Aspire pilot in 2016, working through a lot of stakeholder groups and feedback. If, if you've participated in those in the past, um, those were meetings on several different topics in entrepreneurship to help ground principles and ideas and needs. Um, so that we could develop up the programming in InnoEd in the way that was most effective and best met people where they were. We actually started as a tech and innovation office, um, but then we moved into becoming the innovation and equitable development division. We've been operating different grants since 2017 and the dream grants. If you heard about those, those first started in 2018. So you'll see that there's a, a big long list of additional things that have been happening. Um, but throughout that time, the InnoEd team has been growing as well. And so you'll hear about some of our current team members, and we also want to say a thank you, and, and we'll say a thank you later as well to some of our past team members too. A little bit by the numbers, just so you get a sense of, of how big we are. Um, so we are a four member team, um, maybe soon five, very much hoping for that. We have six major programs. Over time, we've led more than 12 initiatives in some of our um, core training, such as our Build a Dream training, which we haven't been able to offer in a moment. We've trained over 3000 DC residents. For our Aspire program, we have over 200 folks graduate, and we supported over $12 million in grants to over 1,000 businesses. There's a lot of micro grants, and so we really help to support creating the micro grant or micro funding programs from district government for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Within that, we've maintained well over 50 strategic partnerships. We told you that there were a lot of great folks across the district who are doing really good work to support small businesses, and so we try to stay connected with all of them. And in total, we've engaged with more than 20,000 businesses in the last uh, eight years. And so within that, we know that there are even more businesses in the district and that there are more entrepreneurs and we want to continue to engage as well as continue to re-engage those who we've already chatted with. And so one of the things that I just want to make sure that I say, um, and I think it's something that 
that you'll hear from a lot of folks who do similar work to what we do, we're really appreciative of the opportunity to support you. Um, entrepreneurs create solutions in their communities. They solve problems. They build wealth for themselves, their families, and their communities. Entrepreneurship is for everyone, and that is a baseline principle of InnoEd. And so within that, I do want to share some of those principles that were built through some of that early stakeholder engagement that still drives a lot of what um, InnoEd seeks to do today. Um, the first set of principles were de uh, developed through the Aspire program. Aspire is uh, specific for returning citizens and justice impacted residents, um, but it really set the foundation and the framework for how InnoEd approaches things. And so the three principles that were set through Aspire include meeting people where they are, building community, and building community well. And on top of that, as we worked on Build a Dream and then brought the Dream program in, and as we worked with stakeholders, there were several other principles that came in as well. Just heard me say a moment ago, entrepreneurship is for everyone. Entrepreneurs solve problems. People build their dreams one step at a time, and business leaders are community leaders. But as we think about those principles, we also have a number of themes. And I think one of those big themes is always approaching what is equity, how can things be more equitable? Um, equity is in our name and increasing equitable access to resources of all kinds um, is something that we are always doing. And also always understanding equity in more ways and receiving feedback. And so it is an ongoing and collaborative effort to always define what is equity, what is equitable, how can things become more equitable? What are the things that we can affect directly from InnoEd? What are the things that we can support you as entrepreneurs in thinking about how you're pursuing items so that you can make items more equitable as well? And we mentioned those partnerships, but they are so key. And that's a lot of the folks who are gonna be coming through uh, the additional series, but then there are many more after that. And so we do like to partner quickly, often and much. This is how we learn about a lot more resources that we can share with you. And this is part of how the, um, how the entrepreneurial ecosystem grows is through partners and collaborations, not just with us, but with others collaborating with each other and with small businesses collaborating with each other as well. So one of the things that we do want to mention, it'll come back up, but small biz assist. So one of the things that we've been doing in great partnership with the DC Public Library since 2021 is offering one-on-one -on -one technical assistance at the Martin Luther King Library on Wednesdays. And so for this, um, you know, if you would like to sign up, there's a link here. You can also email us at inno.ed at dc.gov if you're having trouble finding the link, if you'd like to come in to meet with one of our team members, um, as well as some additional folks too. And so we have team members from the CBE certification division at DSLBD. We have team members from the business opportunities division at DSLBD. And we have team members from the Department of Licensing and Consumer Protections Small Business Resource Center who also come in Wednesdays at MLK. You might have met us in the past when we did this at 202 Creates, great partners. And we really appreciated the time that we spent with um, 202 Creates. And we are really excited about this partnership that we are continuing to build with DC Public Libraries. Not only is it a great space, but the library has a ton of amazing resources that can be really helpful for entrepreneurs. We were just hearing from the head of the library, uh, the director of the library last week about how they wanna make sure that everyone knows that you can go to any librarian across the city and ask for support with your business. And they're gonna help connect you with resources that are free through the library as well. But when in doubt, and as we dropped in there, if you were trying to figure out a resource, if you were trying to connect with someone, if you just have a question and you're not quite sure where it could be answered, but it is for small businesses, feel free to write to us at inno.ed at dc.gov. If we don't know the answer, we're gonna to try to point you in a direction where you can find that answer. And with that, I'm actually gonna turn some things over to the team to talk a little bit about the things that they do. So I'm turning things over to Camille, and Camille, just tell me whenever you're ready for your next slide. Thank you, Kate. Um, yes, hello again, Camille Nixon. I've been with Inno.ed for about three years with the DC government for 18 years. It's my hometown, so I'm honored to serve the district and particularly to support businesses that come from a family of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial minded people. And it's really helped me to get where I am is to have that type of wealth and family and general generational wealth building that came through entrepreneurship. Um, I work on several projects that came from another team at DSLBD that focus on neighborhood development and businesses with storefronts. Um, but now I work a lot around access to capital. I'm really passionate about supporting the district, particularly social entrepreneurs, um, equitable access to resources and sustainability. Next slide, please. 
So Kate mentioned one of the programs we have is called District Capitalized. This is a three-pronged program. The idea is that getting access to resources to build your business, financial resources, can come in many forms. Your own sales, loans, lines of credit, grants, rebates, how you effectively use your money to save what you do have and use that effectively. These are all ways to capitalize your business. And District Capitalize has um, tools and resources to help you figure out what those products are, those financing opportunities are, um, the guidance that you need to be able to find those and leverage those effectively, and the ecosystem of all the partners Kate mentioned earlier. We work with a lot of different partners, lenders, and technical assistance providers who provide guidance to you all for free. So if you're a DC-based business or a DC resident exploring entrepreneurship, Please don't pay anyone for this information. We're happy to give it to you for free from us and from our partners. Um, we've been doing a lot around district capitalize over the last couple of years. We've run a crowdfunding platform court called DC Kiva Hub, and we're still supporting crowdfunding through Kiva and other platforms. Um, we've recently expanded our passport for funding readiness, which I'll speak about in a moment. And we've launched our equitable access to capital survey, which is also our client onboarding tool. If you're looking for district capitalized assistance. Next slide. A little bit about the equitable access to capital survey. It's a tool that will let us know more about you individually as the owner and about your business, your current conditions, your barriers, your past experiences, and your immediate funding needs. And why this is important is while we have lots of trainings and guidance and referrals to partners who can generally help you as a business, each business may need something different to have the equal access, equal access to capital. We want to make sure that we understand who you are individually in your business so we can connect you with the resources that you specifically need and provide them in a way that's helpful for you to be able to have that equal fair shot at funding opportunities. So this is the link below. I encourage you to sign up. It's your first stop to get um, resources through District Capitalize and other DSLBD resources. We'll onboard you as a client. Um, we'll get you started with your passport for funding readiness tool which is a way that you can create your own funding strategy and it helps you navigate not just the steps to be ready for about 14 different funding opportunities, but it also helps you navigate who is offering the resources that you need, the guidance that you need to strengthen your um, all of those different steps you go through to get ready for funding. So it's kind of hard to know where to begin, what to focus on. This passport will help you do that. And then also becoming a client of DSLBD District Capitalized means that you can get referrals to providers, access our funding alert, and also trainings. Next slide. Some of the programs we've had in the past and will continue as our training series called Money Mondays. I mentioned the, um, the alert about funding opportunities, the DC business funding alert. Um, that's something you can access to if you become a district capitalized client. Next slide. Now, through District Capitalize, um, we do have focused consultations and drop-in hours and referrals to partners around financing, including your uh, developing sales, uh, contracting, vending, as well as lending, borrowing, grants, et cetera, um, and also how to manage your money effectively um, to make use of it and apply it in a way that will help your business grow. Um, so that's specific to district capitalize, but you know that it has a wealth of other topics that we have coverage on for one-on-one -on -one consultations, including the drop-in hours, our small business assist. I'll pause there in case someone else is going to cover that. Um, but we have a way that you can meet with us one-on-one -on -one at the um, MLK libraries, Kate mentioned, and other locations. And one of the things that we're seeing rising to the surface that we're focusing a lot on is um, cooperative and collaborative business models. Um, sometimes it's not enough just to operate on your own. You'd be more impactful and be more cost effective if you collaborate, perhaps even formalizing as a cooperative with similar businesses or similar business owners. And another thing we're seeing a lot is people's interest in acquiring their commercial space or finding ways to co-locate in a meaningful way um, so that we can get you into a space that a space is appropriate for your type of business to get you into a space that is affordable, a location that's helpful, and something that will benefit your business growth instead of hindering it from the burden of having a commercial space. Next slide. Now I'm turning it over to my colleague Javi. Hi, thank, thanks, Camille. So. Um, my name is Javi Sanchez, and a little bit before I um, 
provide a, a little bit of a, a context of what I do at NOED. Um, I've been with the NOED team for uh, since October, about six months. Um, and and overall, before that, I was uh, with the certifications uh, team, the CBE certifications uh, um, team where um, we uh, certified businesses uh, to become CBE um, certified. Um, before that, I was working with uh, LEDC, the Latino Economic Development uh, uh, Center, uh, to uh, provide help them on a uh, JP Morgan uh, grant, uh, providing um, access to capital, business technical assistance to Ward 8 and, and Ward 7 small businesses. Um, and then uh, prior to uh, my uh, work here in, in Washington, in New York, I helped to launch a online men's clothing brand called Peter Manning NYC. Uh, and that um, and that was in 2011. Um, that has, uh, with all that, those experiences, both in private and nonprofit uh, uh, eco spaces, um, I have the privilege to work in DC government and um, I was able to, um, you know, launch a initiative with uh, DSOBD uh, called Refashion. And if uh, you can uh, go to the next slide, please. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to first say um, if you, if everybody can try to picture uh, 9.6 billion of anything. Um, it's difficult to iman imagine, but that's how many pounds of landfill waste are generated by retail returns per year in the U.S. alone. And on top of this, uh, since the uh, post-COVID pandemic, the gap has widened for aspiring fashion designers and businesses to connect with resources, education, the tools and the knowledge uh, to empower them to realize their full business potential. And so that's why I'm very excited that um, we were able to announce the Refashion Initiative. And uh, this initiative focuses on four fashion sustainability areas. Uh, the first one is technical innovation. The second is re-commerce. Third is textile alternatives. And the last one, my favorite, uh, fashion empowerment. And this is all to redefine or if not disrupt what fashion was and what it must become to meet the systematic challenges while supporting the development, the economic growth and the retention of our district-based fashion economy businesses. So right now, currently Refashion is providing a space agency for community building, uh, resource and education sharing and networking uh, for um, DC based fashion businesses and other partners um, that includes retailers, brands, designers, tech companies that are bringing uh, commercially uh, viable solutions through uh, sustainable business models. And um, I can um, just quickly go into detail into those four fashion sustainability areas, uh, just to give, just to provide a little bit of examples of how uh, those areas um, highlight the, um, you know, the, the um, aforementioned um, areas. First one, for example, the uh, fashion technical innovation. Um, this one, for example, um, you know, a, a business that uses uh, AI uh, to better forecast customer demand or introduces uh, 3D de design software, uh, all to reduce online returns, like I spoke earlier about the, um, those uh, returns, re rent, uh, retail returns. Um, Textile alternatives, um, you know, recognizing textile manufacturers, designers, and brands who use innovative, uh, sustainable alternatives to traditional textiles. Uh, for example, uh, textiles made from repurposed, formerly discarded byproducts, or even lab-grown uh, cultures. 
And then re-commerce, we use this in their everyday uh, life. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, Facebook Marketplace, Etsy, uh, things like that, or even um, uh, Goodwill. So these are championing fashion re rental, resale, and recycling uh, startups and companies that are built on circular values, such as rental or buying and selling secondhand um, via storefront or digital retail channels. And the last one uh, is fashion empowerment. This one, uh, this area seeks to break down barriers fashion entrepreneurs face by providing uh, community building resources, the education and networking to empower them with the tools to realize their full business potential. And right now, um, uh, for example, any fashion business or entrepreneur can book a one on one consultation uh, with me uh, with the uh, small business system program that we provide at NOED and um, on topics uh, such as fashion entrepreneurship or e-commerce business development. So um, I think that's uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Bobby, thanks so much. And I, it looks like we did have an additional slide for you, but you already spoke to it. Um, but I, I'll just mention really quickly that um, we mentioned the Small Business Assist program, and you can definitely come and meet with Javi um, both about e-commerce and about fashion. As I mentioned earlier, um, Cynthia is not able to join us today, so I'm going to do a quick introduction for Cynthia as well. Um, if you've worked with us in the past, you may have uh, met and worked with Cynthia Golson. She is our program assistant, assisting across all of our efforts, doing a lot that is behind the scenes. Um, so she joined InnoEd, um, and she's been with us for two years, um, having come from the Department of Corrections. She is passionate about supporting DC entrepreneurs, and she loves chatting with folks about what their dreams are. A lot of things that she'll do is she will actually reach out very frequently by phone. So if you are awarded a grant, or if you are in a program with us, you are probably going to get a call from um, Cynthia. Um, if you are working on uh, an access to capital program, you are probably going to get a call from Cynthia. Um, and if you reach out by phone and you need to get connected to scheduling, you are also going to hear from Cynthia. She's going to help get you connected. So we know that even though we have the email address, ino.ed at dc.gov, sometimes you just need to talk to somebody on the phone. Um, and so we're going to make sure that she can help you get connected where you need to get connected. And then I will talk a little bit about me and then we will start wrapping up and we'll do some questions at the end. Um, so I joined the Department of Small and Local Business Development about eight years ago. Um, prior to that, I spent some time at the then named Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs that is now two different agencies, the Department of Licensing and Consumer Protection and the Department of Buildings, uh, where I worked on regulatory streamlining, some of which is in place, some of which may still be coming in place um, for small businesses. Very passionate about supporting DC entrepreneurs. Um, and I will just say that this has been an amazing experience over the last eight years, um, learning so much from the folks here at DSLBD, learning so much from entrepreneurs and so much from our partners. And within that, I have a, a core belief um, that entrepreneurship is for everyone. So I'm gonna tell you about some of our programs. Some of these may be um, things that our new pro, uh, team member will be helping to support as well once they come on board. Um, but we mentioned that Aspire to Entrepreneurship program, which was our first program. And so that program keeps changing shape a little bit as we take feedback each year from folks who participate. Started as a training program, it became a pitch program. It is currently an incubator program. We have over um, 200 graduates who have come through the Aspire program since 2016. There are over 800 stakeholders who met in the first two years to help really design and think about what some of those program formats and those program principles should be. As an incubator program for this year, um, just so that you know, the application actually closed March 1st, and so folks are actually having their Aspire orientation tonight. Um, but the incubator model is set up so that folks are um, going through training, receiving one-on-one -on -one support through not just the passport, but a lot of additional support from us. Um, and then they will be achieving milestone stipends within their uh, business, um, and they'll be receiving some funding and support for that. One other program that we also um, offered this year, and, and this is new, and so we'll continue to be building this out with feedback from folks who are participating. Um, if folks applied for the Aspire program, but did not meet eligibility, they were still able to come into the Aspire prep program. Um, so that would be for unlicensed businesses. Um, if you had applied to Aspire, 
And within that, they can receive um, some milestone support. It will mostly be through licensure um, and, and a reduced funding amount, but it's still support if you were looking to get support for your business. Dream pitch. Dream pitch is a little bit different than Aspire. Um, sometimes you'll hear us reference both programs at the same time, um, just because they are two really big programs that often have a very similar timeline. Dream Pitch, however, is specific to Ward 7 and 8 resident-owned micro-businesses. This program started in 2018 as Dream Grants, and then it transitioned to a pitch program that has a lot of training um, and preparation that happens in, uh, in sort of prep for that. There are pitch prizes. Everyone receives, everyone who meets program requirements and then pitches will receive between at least $2,000 to $7,500 to support their business, and then we do an additional Battle of the Wards. Um, so those who do best in their ward based pitch are going to move forward to the battle of the wards. And I'll say briefly about this program as we continue to build it up. We are seeing the strength that pitching can bring to a business uh, because when you need to develop a very specific pitch for your business, it makes you think a lot about it. And an investor style pitch is making you think about the money. It's making you think about your market. It's making you think about your team and your traction. Um, and another part of DSLBD, the office of the director recently just did a pitch for Aspire and Dream alumni, Made in DC businesses and certified business enterprises um, during Small Business Week last week. And we saw the strength of folks who had come through one of the InnoEd pitch programs and being able to provide a really strong pitch. And as we continue to work with folks, we're also hearing and seeing where all of that preparation is taking their business elsewhere. Um, some of the things that we'll be looking to offer over the course of the next year, um, whether or not someone comes into DREAM is additional support on pitching. You'll find that um, preparing your pitch deck and preparing your pitch and preparing your why are all parts of the passport for funding readiness because it's all about telling the same story and having a very refined story that you get feedback on and continue to refine and continue to tell over time. And so DREAM underscores our commitment to ensuring that hyper locally owned small businesses um, have that chance to develop. And it's something that um, we've been operating since 2018. Business to business is new this year. If you are an applicant in business to business, um, our timeline is a little off, but we are working on it and it is still coming. Um, business to business is a grant program that we launched this year. Uh, to further unbundle the services that are provided to Aspire and Dream and one more program, just cannabis businesses. And so one of the things that we recognize is there's an incredible amount of strength within the entrepreneurial community to teach other entrepreneurs and to support other entrepreneurs. And so business to business in 2024, um, it's new this year, and it is our effort to bring more service providers and more local businesses into the fold in supporting others. And again, um, we are working on getting more information out about that soon for anyone who did apply. But let me tell you about Just Canna Business. Um, and this is for anyone who is interested in the medical cannabis market in DC. So in 2021, we launched the Just Canna Business Initiative. We'd received a small amount of funding to be able to support um, equitable access to DC's cannabis market. At that time, they had not opened up the licensure yet but in December of 2022, the district passed the Medical Can uh, Cannabis Amendment Act of 2022, and it opened up licensure quite widely. It actually changed the name of the Alcohol, Beverage, and Regulatory Administration to the Alcohol, Beverage, and Cannabis Administration. And so what we've been doing for the past years, in addition to supporting folks through um, technical assistance at the library, is also supporting the creation of loan funds. There are a lot of um, barriers to access to capital for cannabis businesses. Cannabis remains federally a Schedule I drug, and so there are a lot of additional barriers, and it is harder for cannabis businesses to receive um, technical assistance or funding or even banking support. And so within that, um, we are looking to offer some additional cannabis classes this summer under B2B as that comes forward, as a lot of people are looking to enter this market through the medical license regulatory structure at the Alcohol, Beverage, and Cannabis Administration. I also offer general business technical assistance. So when you look at the Small Biz um, Assist website, you're going to see a lot of different service listings. If your topic doesn't fit into one of those service listings, you can choose general business advice and assistance, um, and I will be happy to meet with you. Definitely do not know all answers to all questions in any respect, um, but what I will do is um, help you ideate and help you think about where you're going to find that information if it's not something that we already have available. And so if you would like to come and meet with me, 
um, you can go ahead and schedule under general business uh, technical assistance. We do want to make sure that we say a lot of thank yous. Um, this was a quick overview so you can get a sense of things that are happening now. There are a lot of other programs that DSR InnoEd has run in the past, um, including uh, programs that have moved to other divisions at DSLBD. Sometimes we will incubate a program and move that. So in the past, we operated the Made in DC program. We operated the CBE Green program. We operated the Robust Retail program. Um, and many of those have shifted to other parts of the agency. But as we work to define new programs, as we work to um, rework grant rules and other pieces, we owe a lot of thanks. And so we want to make sure that we say thanks to the other parts of DSLBD and of the entrepreneurial community, but to our legal team at DSLBD, to our admin team, to our communications team, to the several other divisions who we didn't even highlight specifically today, but CBE certification, commercial revitalization, APEX accelerators, business opportunities, and to the leadership of DSLBD who continues to support us. That's just at DSLBD. We also have a huge amount of thanks to share to third party payors, to the budget office at the office of the chief financial officer to help move funds, to the office of contracts procurement and the office of risk management, um, who does a lot to help with both payments and, and other pieces that are required on grants, to the leadership in the mayor's office and the deputy mayor for planning and economic development, to all of the SBTA providers, that means small business technical assistance providers across the district and businesses like you. And just a couple more things that we also want to make sure that we say. So over the years, we mentioned we have engaged hundreds of stakeholders, dozens of partners, thousands of entrepreneurs, and we try to learn from each of those engagements. We have also had more than a dozen wonderful interns and fellows working with us to help us learn as we support their continued learning as well. We have two interns who are work well, one intern, and one fellow who are working with us right now. Um, so a huge thank you to both of them and to everyone who has worked with us in the past. And in addition, we have three team members who have moved on to do other roles in the small business ecosystem. And so just a huge shout out and a thank you to Virginia Marie Rory, Caroline Howe, and Shannon Taylor, all of whom brought a lot of structure and ideas um, into what InnoEd is. And we continue to grow and build upon um, the shoulders of, of things that they left as they continued on. So there's always a lot more that we can talk about, but I just want to say thank you for now. We'll probably go ahead and wrap up the recording, but I saw that there were some questions in the chat, so we will go ahead and um, take those offline. Javi, if you want to pause the recording. Sorry, pause or stop? Either one. Okay. <laughs> 